Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, if we're really being truthful, we ought to tag this bill with a line that reads, SB1 makes it harder to vote and easier to cheat. I'd say any assertion to the contrary is easily disproven if you look at it critically. Y'all, Texas is already the most difficult state in the union to register and cast a vote. And this bill is going to make it even harder. The bill is going to make it harder to cast a vote. This bill erects new barriers to voting, such as additional requirements for mail-in ballots. It places new limits and additional rules for voter assistance. It even adds deterrence for assistance from family members. It deters family members from assisting their family to vote. The bill seeks to attack community organization efforts to turn out the vote, and it seeks to purge the voter rolls, uses criteria that disproportionately affects communities of color, especially Latinos. But that's not all. Besides making it harder to vote, the bill makes it easier to cheat, and I say that's in the form of voter intimidation, and also intimidating our election judges and officials. The bill even has provisions to lay the groundwork to challenge election outcomes and undermine faith in our election system in Texas. Seems to me that's the last thing we want to do. The bill criminalizes multiple aspects of the voting process, including the threat of new or elevated criminal penalties for election judges to discourage them from even maintaining order in the election place, in the polling location especially with regard to these partisan poll watchers. With this bill, a partisan violating the law can only be asked to leave, but that same disruptive person can turn around and bring a criminal charge against the election official who's just trying to maintain order in the polling place. This philosophy will lessen our ability to prevent voter intimidation by partisans, partisan poll watchers. The bill expands and harshens possible criminal penalties for voter assisters and community organizers. These provisions are clearly aimed at reducing voter participation, and we all know that these measures disproportionately affect communities of color. And that's certainly why the bill authors have not sought analysis to determine if there would be a disproportionate impact on our communities of color, because they already know. In fact, that is the design of this legislation. So the proposed legislation in front of us by design will disproportionately discourage and include, exclude communities of color while also disproportionately intimidating communities of color. Texas has a long history of election laws proven to reduce overall participation, especially affecting surgically affecting communities of color. Do you all think that might be driven by shifting demographics that have been made crystal clear by preliminary census results we've received? you all, if this body were reflective of the current population of Texas as reported by the census so far, we would have just as many Hispanics as whites in this chamber. 40% each. That would be 60 out of 150 members. Look around you and tell me, is that our makeup in this chamber? Members, we have been asked to avoid using a certain word. So what's an appropriate alternative term to describe a situation where people of color are systematically and methodically disadvantaged? Because that is certainly the case for Texas election law. And this bill will elevate the attack on our freedom to vote to a whole new level. We always use phrases like, well, if you really wanted, if you really wanted to make it easier to vote, you would fill in the blank. Clearly, that's not the actual intent of this bill, because if it was to make voting easier, we would work to expand access. We would implement stuff like we did in Harris County in this last election like allowing drive-through voting, 24-hour voting locations. We would work to expand and strengthen vote-by-mail programs to instill confidence in them instead of undermining them. 
as they have done so successful in states like Colorado and that liberal bastion, Utah. But no, instead of expanding and strengthening vote by mail, we instead choose to threaten to jail elections administrators and public officials for simply providing information on how to qualify and, and sign up to vote by mail. Y'all, I have to let this sink in. Instead of expanding access, we are threatening to jail folks who are working to expand access to the ballot. <sighs> I proposed an amendment aimed at promoting public safety and health in our polling places. I proposed allowing anyone who's overtly sick to vote curbside, but that was rejected without any logical explanation. And y'all wonder why we broke quorum. The entire premise of this legislation is founded on the notion that our elections are not secure or not secure enough in Texas. We call that the big lie for a reason. I like to play games with numbers. You know me, but not today. We already know proving cases of vote problems in Texas is minuscule, minuscule. You're seriously more likely to be struck by lightning than to find voter fraud in Texas. The people of Texas want us to improve access to health care. They want us to fight COVID. They want us to improve public education. They really want us to fix the grid. But that's not what we're doing here today. I submit that if the focus were on forwarding truly popular policy, you would want more voter participation, not less. And that's why I say this bill is bad for Texas, because it's a bold attack on our freedom to vote. Thanks for your attention.